the experimental release of React as a new activity component. And if you are a performance-minded engineer or you're working on large systems like dashboards, it's one you're going to want to know about. Let's jump right into it. So here's our little test app, and it's kind of like a dashboard. There are a lot of graphs. They all actually show exactly the same data. This is going to allow us to see two different things. It's going to allow us to see the performance of the graphs, and if we're seeing any kind of frames per second slowdown, it's also going to allow us to see a little bit of how fast it is to show and hide these graphs. And in addition to these graphs, there's also this input field up here, and this is where I'm going to be able to show you a slowdown in user event processing. So if this starts to get pokey, we know that user events aren't actually getting as much attention as they should. So the activity component is really about showing and hiding parts of the DOM. So how are we actually showing and hiding the graphs here? Well, I go over to source and then routes and then lots of graphs, which is what that page is. Let's take a look at this page. So down here at the bottom, we have our route component. It's got basically three pieces of data. It's got the graphs, which is just a constant array that we use to just create 50 graphs. It's got the input for the input field. It's got the data. This is the data that we're actually going to send out to all of the graphs. They all view the same, exact same data. We got a use effect that keeps the data moving by creating that moving sinusoid. And then down the JSX, we've got our input field as well as all of our graphs. Now our graphs are actually wrapped in this toggle graph. That's the button that allows us to toggle and untoggle. So if we take a look at that, it takes the data and the name is props. And it's also got its own internal toggle. So that's what drives that button. Now, in this case, we're actually using a toggle to either add or remove that graph from the DOM. And that graph, by the way, just takes the data and then uses recharts to just draw it. So back to this toggle, there's really two different ways to toggle something on and off the screen, right? There is this way, which is you mount and unmount it from the DOM. And then there's also using CSS. So let's take a look at this first way, which is mounting and unmounting for the DOM. The pro of this is if we take a look at over at our console, we can see that we're only rendering the two graphs that you are actually working on. So that's why this is still pretty quick. In fact, if I bring up FPS, we can see that this is still rocking uh, 55 frames a second, which isn't bad. If I add more graphs on here, this is definitely going to start to slow down. So you can start to see go down to you know, the 30s and the 20s. You know, this is not great. And we can see that we are hitting a lot of these graph components and rendering them. And that's why it's taking up a lot of time and why the FPS is dropping. Sadly, actually, none of the techniques that I'm going to show you are going to fix that problem, which is just rendering a lot of stuff. This activity component is really cool because it's going to give us a novel third option between either removing and adding the graph from the DOM versus hiding it and showing it with CSS. It's actually give us a, like something in between, but it's actually not going to help us just speed up the app in general. That would be awesome, but that's not going to happen. Now, the issue here is when we toggle or untoggle this graph, we're completely unmounting and remounting that component from the VDOM. So we get a full state reset as well as a complete re-render of the component, which depending on the complexity of your component could be a big downside. So how could we avoid that? Well, we could use the other option, which is to use CSS to do the toggling, which means that we're always rendering all the graphs. We're just deciding not to show them based on CSS. Well, let's see what the performance impact looks like there. If I refresh, then everything just goes pretty much bonkers right away. So we can see that the FPS is super low. We're now really no longer responsive, and that's because we're rendering all 50 graphs all the time. We're just choosing not to show them. So this is just a completely unacceptable approach in this case for performance reasons. Okay, so now we take a look at the two options that we currently have. Let's bring in the experimental build, and I'll show you how to use that activity component to give us a novel third approach. All right, we'll go right here to our package JSON. So I'll change out the React for the experimental branch. I'll do a full reinstall, and we'll fire back up the server again. Now back over in lots of graphs, we can now bring in that activity component. Now any new feature that's currently experimental is going to be prefixed with unstable. Now, this should just be a good indication to you that what you're doing is experimental. But, you know, you never really lived until you've released Interprod and experimental features. So, hey, there you go. Okay, let's try out activity. So how do I use this? Well, I'm going to go and replace this div. And let's go take a look at the docs and see what I should be doing. Well, I should be using this activity component and then giving it mode. And that mode is either visible or hidden. So 
Pretty easy change. Visible. There we go. Now let's give it a try. All right, so here we are back on our page. Let's go to our inspector. And we can see that we are actually getting a lot of graphs rendering, which is kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and bring up the FPS. But the FPS is still, wow, it's up like at almost 60. That's great. And if we bring up a graph, that's awesome. Still in that 54 range like we were before. That's great. But we are actually rendering graphs even though we're not showing them. So you can see graph one is getting rendered, graph three is getting rendered, but we're not actually showing it. So what is this activity component really doing? Well, it's actually allowing that component that's inside to render, even when it's not visible. It just renders in a low priority task, which is fantastic. Now it's rendering that to the virtual DOM, and that means that it's ready whenever you want to enable it, make it visible. You can just take whatever is in the VDOM and just drop it into the DOM as long as it's up to date, which is fantastic. Now you can see that my high priority events, my user interaction is still really good. That's great. Now, of course, it's not going to save us if we have lots of different graphs on there. That FPS is still going to drop down just like it was before. But it does give us this interesting third option between either just completely not having the component in the DOM or hiding it with CSS. Now we can have it in the VDOM and updating as much as it can, but ready to go when we need it. So one thing that's kind of interesting is that I've actually run this on two different machines. I run this on this machine and I run it on my personal laptop. And we can see is that here, we're only rendering up to say graph six or so. On my laptop, we are rendering up to graph 10. So there is some work that React is doing to see the performance impact of these activity components and the code that's within that activity component. And it's trying to make sure that this background processing doesn't take much away from the main thread so that we still keep our interactivity. All right, now let's talk about how fast these hide and show because that's another area where activity can help you out. So remember when we were removing and adding the graph from the DOM, that the downside was that adding the graph back in would be costly in terms of performance? Well, I can actually measure that. So let's go back over here to our graph speed of show page. And I'll get rid of FPS since it really isn't about FPS. And clean out the console. And now I'm gonna hide and show this cool line graph. And we can see that the big number here is when we're adding. So it takes about 480 milliseconds to compute all of these graphs, create a virtual DOM, and then add that virtual DOM to the current page. So let's go take a look at what we're doing. Well, we're currently doing that toggling approach. We're just adding and removing all of those graphs from the DOM. Well, let's, instead of using that toggle approach, let's use activity instead and see what the performance numbers look like there. So if I re-enable activity, I go back over here, we can see that, yes, we did get 517 milliseconds to do the initial render, which is interesting because what's happened is that it's actually rendered that whole thing off into the VDOM. And now when I click here, when we show, it only takes 188 milliseconds, which means that it's taking the VDOM, which has already been pre-computed, and applying that to the DOM, and that's taking the 180 milliseconds. So this new activity component is a fantastic win for performance critical applications. You're definitely gonna want to get on an experimental branch and try it out if that's the kind of work that you're doing. It is really interesting that it's exposing this ability that the React library has of being able to selectively decide what parts of the interface are going to be rendered and at what time. That's really cool. And it'll be interesting to see what additional features we might get that will allow us to say, even though this component is visible, maybe it needs lower priority rendering. This could be really cool. It's, it's really neat to see these enhancements to the React ecosystem. All right, of course, all this code is available to you for free in a GitHub link in the description right down below. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please put that in the comments section. The engagement always helps. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.